Good afternoon. This is Jody Truman, a financial specialist for Child Nutrition. Before we get started, I just want to mention a, a couple updates. This webinar will is being recorded and will be posted on our website. And I just want to also remind everybody to please read the Thursday update as important dates and events are listed there. Soon, the FY25 applications for SNP will be open and I'll be announcing that through the Thursday update. All right, thank you again for joining me today as we discuss the 2024 annual financial report. Today, we're gonna to be reviewing the annual financial report located in CNP web within the forms tab, program year 2024. The AF, it's the annual financial report, it's not a P, it should be an R, is filed after your claim has been approved uh, for 24 in CNP web. Deadline for submission is September 1st. The screenshot here shows the uh, what the annual financial report looks like in uh, the income section. And just to as a reminder, all child nutrition funds should be reported separately in the district's sponsors accounting software. DOE provides MEFs numbers for each of our revenue streams to help with this process. You should work with your business manage, business office, business manager on how your expenses are recorded in your system. When completing the annual financial report, the responsibility is with the food service department, preferably the, man the food service manager. The business office can be included, but there must be a division of duties for the program integrity. We encourage you to work together in this process. If you are participating in the following programs <clears throat> that are listed here, their time periods uh, for reporting, um, again, are listed right here. So in 2024, you're gonna be reporting SNP July 1st, 23 through June 30th, 24. SFSP program year is 2023, and that's June, July, August of 2023. CAC, CACFP at risk after school program meals. Um, it's program year 23, July, August, and September. And then program year 24, October 23 through June 24. Um, and this is because we follow the um, main uh, fiscal year, which is the school fiscal year. Uh, we have. I've talked previously on our financial worksheet that we have. Um, we've had uh, webinars on this before. So using a tool like the financial worksheet shown here, um, and again reviewed in a past webinar, webinar, you can simply use a yearly tab to copy amounts to your annual financial report. Your next step would be to confirm the year and summary statements from the business office. If you haven't started using a tool like this, we'll be going over that, that process today in a little more detail if this isn't something you've already um, started. I do want to mention that if you are using the financial worksheet shown here, there will be a couple changes that I'll be talking about um, in, a, in a couple of slides ahead. Um, the financial worksheet, again, has been developed to assist you in completing the annual financial report. Um, and I have indicated where that's located. It's on our website under financial uh, and it's under, um, I think it's under reporting. If you have questions on where it's located, you can email me and I can, I can show you um, where that's located. Or a copy of these slides will also be provided um, and you can, we'll be able to click the links. The financial worksheet that we've provided is separated by month, but can be filled out at your convenience. Best practice would be monthly. The yearly tab will compile all the months together for you to complete the financial report in CMP 
and CMP web. If you haven't started using this, it's never too late to start now, as you will need to review all your income and expenses anyway to complete the annual financial report. Again, if you are using the financial worksheet, which is on the right, you can simply use a yearly tab to copy amounts to your annual financial report. I need to point out a couple of the differences in the two as the changes did not com get completed in CMP web to match the worksheet in time. So the first one, um, so on the left side is the annual financial report, column J, where it says non-federal other food service. It does not, you can see it doesn't match the worksheet, which is called a la carte. So this is J is a la carte. So just keep that in mind. And the other change that didn't happen was the on the annual financial report, uh, the state revenue match number four. As you can see, only lunch is opened and we should have lunch and breakfast open just like you have on the financial report here on the right. So for this year, what I'm gonna ask you to do is on your, if you're using this worksheet, um, you're gonna take your main, I'm sorry, your um, state revenue match, breakfast, oops, breakfast total, and you're gonna move it down to other income for this year. And hopefully next year we will get that fixed uh, for reporting. So again, your breakfast, school breakfast, if you're using this worksheet, you have compiled it all year under state revenue match, school breakfast, this is your main funds only. Uh, you are gonna put that total in the other, ca other category here under breakfast. And I believe I showed that on the next, the next screen as well. Let's see. Nope, not yet. <laughs> um, from this point, we're going to review how to fill out the annual financial report in CMP Web if you do not have another tool to help you complete this report. So you'll be reporting income based on these line titles with the appropriate column title. So we have our our lines here, and then we have our titles going across of our programs. These are our program titles going across. So sales to children, this would be the money students pay for, for a reimbursable meal. The only schools that might have amounts listed here are private schools. Um, the a la carte column with the sales to children line would be a second meal, extra milk or any other smart snack compliant foods. So that will be going under your the a la carte, which is J. Next, you have your adults, uh, sales to adults. So this is your payments for lunch, breakfast meals that would be listed, um, that would be listed under a la carte. Um, some people have done it as the meals, putting them under lunch and breakfast, or just putting it all under a la carte as that's what it is, as that's what that's really what it is. It's any, you can do it any way you you want as long as you're consistent. Um, catering would be listed in the a la carte column under adult as well. So your catering would go under um, the J column under sales to adults. Loans and interest, your child nutrition bank account may be an interest bearing account. That revenue would go here, but this is, but just note that's only listed as a total um, section. The state revenue match, number four, this is your main reimbursement amounts for meals served. Lunch, again, lunch is the only one that's opened at this time. Uh, main, uh, your main breakfast reimbursement should be added to the other income line under the breakfast column. So again, your other income under breakfast. The federal reimbursement, this is all your income from your federal meal reimbursements using, you're gonna be using school lunch, breakfast, lunch and breakfast, and then if you're participating in any of the other programs. So 
this special melt program, this is only for those districts, which I believe is only a couple that are doing um, the melt program. This is not a la carte. This is only for the, if you're participating in the melt program on your application. Um, SS, the sum SSO, um, which I don't think we have anybody doing SSO. You have fresh fruit and vegetable. There, here is your S, SFSP and your child and adult care. Your other income, that could be town appropriation for your program, SCA funds, equipment grant, other and other grants from outside sources. Local foods, the federal and state are also entered on, in the other category. Um, you'll have both federal and main funds entered on this line. Rebates would be an example if you had a rebate check for chicken nuggets or pizza um, that, and you'd most likely put that under your school lunch or if it's a rebate from a muffin or such, obviously you would put that under breakfast. So you would just put your rebates under the appropriate um, program heading. The state revenue match and federal reimbursement dollar amounts can be found in CNP web under the sponsor summary section payment tab. As you have seen here, I have a screenshot um, listed here. The first one we'll go over is the match column, which is right here. This is the amount of money you're receiving from the state of Maine for your breakfast and lunch meals. Each batch number, which is right here, um, may contain more than one month of reimbursement. So you'll need to open up the line to confirm the month listed for the payment. And you do that by clicking, it's my mouse, by clicking this little arrow, um, this little button here, it'll drop down and then I'll show you what months are listed for that payment. On the payment tab, the amounts are combined, but we're gonna see in a minute that um, on the claims tab, when we look at the claims tab, you can see this match broken out. And we're gonna look at that in a minute in the next slide. The second yellow section here is your federal lunch and breakfast reimbursement meals. Again, on the next slide, we'll look at this broken out on your claims tab. You also have your snack amounts listed here. Um, and this is, uh, so you have your total payments listed here for snacks. You have um, the milk if you're in the milk program and you also have your FFDP. And then remember produce, this produce right here uh, for this year is your, um, it's gonna, it'll be under other, but it's the your federal um, local foods um, submissions within CNP Web are listed here. Also note that the date listed, which is right here, is not the date that Maine has, has issued your reimbursement money. Claim submissions must be approved by the sponsor and approver by the end of day of the 8th of each month. Payments are then issued somewhere between the 12th and the 15th of the month, depending on, on holidays. So the date listed here, this is not when the payment was sent out to you. So just keep, in, keep that in the back of your mind. Okay, at the top, um, the sponsor summary at the top of this page is what we're gonna look at, that we looked at on the previous slide. So this here is what we had looked at. The second picture here, is the summary page of the claims tab. So, um, and you can find that by clicking on the dollar sign, the dollar icon sign, and then it takes you to the summary, the summary claim amount. And this breaks down um, what is listed on the sponsor, on the sponsor summary on this top piece under the payments tab. And that's what we're gonna talk about right now. So lunch is listed first, as you can see, and we're talking the state revenue match. So we can see here, it's blocked out the state um, lunch, 
you have 6440 and 925925. Um, and that's a total of 932365. So that amount. Um, so when you if you have a if you're separating this out each month, you really should be so you know how much is your lunch and how much is your breakfast reimbursement. So you should have some form of a worksheet to separate this out each month so you can um, you can indicate it appropriately on your annual, annual financial report. So on some type of a worksheet for, let's say this was October, you would have your, um, your state lunch reimbursement would be these two added together, which would be 932365. And then on your breakfast, which is down here, your state reduced breakfast, you're going to take these two amounts, your breakfast, your reduced and paid, add those together and put that on your worksheet. So every month you'll be tallying up these totals and then the, the summary, year-end summary of that should um, be entered in your state revenue match for uh, lunch and for breakfast. And you put in the breakfast under the other for right now. Uh, there is one caveat to this is there is a one-time um, payment that is made um, to you all and it's called, or for all public schools, and it's called state match. And you will see that um, on the side, I didn't know if we could see it here. So what you'll see, it's a one-time payment and nothing will be listed. There'll be zeros on your lunch and breakfast and only an amount listed under on your state match. And that is not gonna show up on your uh, claim tab. So that amount, um, you do wanna make sure you add that to your lunch. You can put that just under your lunch because that has to do with your lunch, um, the number of meals for your lunch that you're, you're getting um, a portion of a reimbursement. So that would go into the lunch piece. So just a reminder that the total for the year is entered in the annual financial report. Okay, so you just wanna keep that in the mind. And next we're gonna look at the federal reimbursement. So similar to the state of Maine, you have your total lunch um, is at the, you have your lunch and then you have your breakfast. And this is the federal part. So total lunch is served and then your meal count is your 5229.48. So that's your, that's your lunch and then your breakfast is listed here. Uh, I will mention as another piece, uh, when I believe when the, I know when the checks are coming in, you're, it's being listed as uh, the lunch is broken up into two parts. I think regular and it's, sorry, it's escaping me, whatever the other, so it's in two parts. And there is a formula to figure that out. And I did not put it on my slide, but if you want to know what that is, email me, I can share that with you. So if you want to make, you want to double check um, that ahead of time, if you're doing this monthly, I can share that with you. Um, in my previous uh, webinar, I did give that breakdown on how you, how you figure, uh, figure that out. I think it's essay and regular. So um, anyway, email me and I can, I can let you know. But the end result is your total lunch reimbursement is going to go on your federal and it's going to go into the lunch and then your breakfast for the year. That's where the, um, your total lunch and your total breakfast will be put in your annual financial report. And whatever, and it should match your, um, the total on your payment tab. It, unless you are, the only thing, the only time it may not is if you owed money back to us and it was a check, uh, those, when you submit a check for money owed back, it's not recorded on your claim, on your payment tab. So just keep that in mind. That's why it's important that you're looking at your account um, end of year account summary or monthly summary from your business manager, because all that should be reported there. Okay. Once you've completed and confirmed your reimbursement payments from your payment 
from the payment tab, which there's your, this is your payment tab and there's the totals that I was just talking about down here. So you wanna make sure that these totals, your income totals are, are matching what is here. Again, you'll have, it may be off a little bit. And this is using the financial worksheet, um, this piece here, if you're using this or any other sort of worksheet to compile for your annual financial report. Um, so once you've completed uh, your reimbursement payments from your payment tab, you can move on to your other income lines that are listed. Uh, this will be found on your detailed revenue report summary that can be provided by your business manager or accountant, whoever handles the financial side of the district or school. Um, so again, you're going to want to be double checking what you're getting from the business office and making sure your, your year ends are totaling because your annual financial report um, should be matching what you're, what you're getting from your business manager. Um, the note section, I really like this note section on this reporting tool because um, some months you may end up getting, um, in the other column, you may be getting funds from other sources. And this can be a way of marking that down, making note of that. So when you're reviewing each month, you can, oh, that's what that was for. Or just to keep, you know, to help you remember what, um, those that are in that other column, what, what you've done. This is an example, one example of a district's revenue account summary that was given to a business manager. Um, so, um, and they're all, I've seen many different ones, but this is just one example. Um, and I circled, I did circle the Fed, the state funds. So you can see the state funds. Um, and I just wanted you to note that the MEFs numbers that I was talking about, this is at 3251 that's listed here. And the next slide, I'm going to show you the MEFs, um, the MEFs worksheet as well. But the, and then you see down here is the subsidy for federal, and that starts with a 4554, 4557. Um, and you can see that they are broken out into each program. Uh, any federal money received uh, will must start with a four, like indicated here. And then the main revenue always starts with a three. And then next slide. So this is the MEF revenue, revenue codes. It is listed on our website and under the Child Nutrition website under financial. And then it's under the financial resources and guidance. And um, the mass revenue code, I've highlighted it for you right here. So when you click that, it prints out, these are all of our codes. And you can see right here is the MEFS revenues, revenue numbers. Um, and it is important because your federal funds, like I said, are the 400 series, 4,000 series. And that is for other, you're recording that in your system as just a marker of how much federal funds you are receiving. So it is something that DOE is looking at. And then you have your state of Maine accounts, which is the 3000. If you are not sure of what uh, what uh, revenue number you should be using for MEFs, you can, MEFs, you can give me a call and I can help um, determine what that should be. If it's something that um, we don't, oops, we don't have listed, um, I can get, I can work with the financial office, DOE financial office and get one um, and find out which one we should be using for a different stream if needed. All right. So now we're moving into the expense section. So again, on the right is the, is your financial worksheet. Um, expenses that's done monthly. Um, and then again, if you've done this all year, you're just going to go to the yearly tab and plug all your numbers in and you are done. So literally you've done all your work throughout the year. So when you do the annual financial report, it takes you probably less than five minutes to complete. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. Well, if you're, <laughs> if you're confirming your balances with the business manager, then it should be really five minutes or less to complete that. Um, if you're doing that throughout the year. But if you're not using this worksheet, 
So we're going to look at the expense section on the annual financial report, which is right here. Again, the titles at the top are the same as income. Remember, J is going to be a la carte. So food expense, that's all your food. You'll break it out by your program. Labor and benefits. So that's the employees that are working in child nutrition in the child nutrition program. Um, that's those are the only people that should be showing in your labor and benefits. Equipment, $300 or less. Think of that as small wear. And the equipment, more than $300, um, that's your big ticket items like the oven, an oven or uh, dishwasher. You know, actually, probably most everything is over $300 these days. So it's your big ticket items. Your other section. Here is your non-food, could be your telephone, conferences, repair maintenance, fees, et cetera. So any other expense that you're incurring with your child nutrition um, program. Then indirect costs, um, I, there are no, no schools in the state of Maine that should be using this indirect cost column. Um, so you would leave that blank. Uh, I will also mention, and I didn't mention an income, but it's the same for expenses, is that you have to do the calculation. That's um, the system doesn't calculate it for you. So you're putting your, your end of year amounts on each of these in each of these columns, on each of these lines, then you have to do the add addition and put it in the A total column. And so you will do that for each of them as you go down through. Again, you're gonna be going to your detailed expense report from your business manager. and filling out this information as well to make sure your balances, everything balances in a, and everything is matching appropriately, just like you did with their income. Okay, so from the detailed expense report from your business manager, um, you're breaking out your total expenses uh, by category, lunch, breakfast, et cetera. So doing this process, um, I would start probably with my FFEP if you're participating FFEP, because when you do your claim for FFEP, you already have broken down your food, other labor on your claims. So, so those numbers should be easily accessible to you. Uh, there's also usually with FFEP, FFEP, you've already created a financial worksheet for the year. So that's something that you have, have already. So that's a simple it can be a simple way to start. If you participate in CACFP and summer, again, you've already broken out those totals um, and those can be added to each of the columns and line descriptions. After school snack program, uh, we also provide in the after school snack program on our website, we provide you with a daily record um, and that breaks down the cost for you as well. Therefore, you can use this total, this record as a snack expense by food labor and other for your end of year um, annual financial report. Your a la carte can get a little more in depth. You have your smart stacks, which are an easy food expense to have and easy, usually easy to, to segregate out. Um, I recommend on each invoice that you break out your a la carte and have an expense line called a la carte or, a la carte or something on your detailed expense on your detailed expense report from your business manager. This will keep track of catering and your a la carte expenses. If you're serving second meals, you'll need to know your meal cost to pull that number out for your total food expenses. Um, your school breakfast, this can be as simple as taking the number of meals served with how much a breakfast meal costs and putting the total under the food and other. Um, your other would be your, the other category would be the cost of the napkin, straw, spoon, et cetera. Your labor piece, if you do not have the breakdown of breakfast, I mean, I'm sorry, of your benefits and labor costs for each program, you can take the total number of meals for each 
program and then get that percentage uh, for each of the programs and then take that percentage and times it by your remaining labor expenses to get your labor for your breakfast and lunch or just your lunch. Um, you'll do the same thing for food expenses. Uh, you'll um, you do that same process. I there's I know understand this is a lot, <laughs> um, and again I just want to um, stress that if you're it's much easier if you're doing this throughout the year. But again, if you haven't done it yet, it's never too late to start. Um, you have to do it anyway. So I would encourage you to use some form of a worksheet. And the one that David um, Hartley, the one on our website, the one that we've been showing, he developed that to mimic our annual financial report. So it's a seamless transition. So I would encourage you um, to use that if, you're, if you don't have something already set up. So once you have validated everything with a business manager, you're agreeing on all your totals, um, you've added everything up, then your next your next step is you're going to cal um let me show you. you're going to hit the calculate button on on the bottom of the form and that will tell you if you have any errors um what's weird is the system does tell you what the column should be but it doesn't total it up for you but it does tell you what your column should be so you're going to want to make sure there's no errors once you have completed, fixed all your errors, um, then you can click, I believe save is the next piece after, after you have no, oh yeah, you can save it at any time, but the next step, sorry, once you have no errors, oops, I jumped ahead, is the next part is the account balance part. So your beginning balance um, number 16, that is going to be um, your beginning balance, your ending balances of last year. I have talked to a few of you as uh, some of you have found that once the auditor has gone through your, <clears throat> excuse me, your financial, that your ending balance did change. Um, so whatever that audit balance was or that they gave you, that would be the beginning balance you're going to add, you're going to put on number 16 here. So it may not necessarily match your ending balance from last year. Um, so I just want to point that out. So your beginning balance, number 16, um, is is your ending balance as of as of last as last school year, once the auditors have confirmed everything. Then number 17, your total income, that's from from your income section above, um, I believe it's it's A8 is your total income. You're gonna put that number there. Your total expenses is coming from above again. So that is um, A15 is your expense total. You're gonna put that there. And then you're just gonna do the calculation. Uh, 16 plus 17 minus 18 equals your ending balance. Then on number 20, your accounts payable. So this is any bills that have not been paid yet uh, for the program year at the program year end of reporting. So that could be something that happened after you've ended everything, um, after you've completed everything, you've um, that didn't go through the end of year report from your business manager. So if you have, it could be accounts receivable, could be your last, it could ha could actually be your last claim payment that you haven't received yet because you're you will receive that sometime in July. So that could be what is what you're listing under 21. And then of course you have your balance would be um, the tap the the ending balance of of the whole process. So your ending balance minus 20 plus 21 equals your 22. And I just want to also point out this this is what uh, David uses for your balance too high report. So the gen it, this is that report is generated from your annual financial report. So it is very important that you do um, get this uh, correct. Okay, so all of this, everything that you have put in up above your income and your expenses, all ends up filtering down into 
into the average per meal cost section. This is why it's important that we do separate your expenses um, with school lunch and breakfast and distinguish your revenue from each of them that we can get a get the the correct um, the correct average per meal cost. Um, and I will also mention and I forgot to mention I forgot to mention that wherever you have income, you must have expenses or a will error. So if you're having income in a section up above, you have to make sure your expenses, you have expenses in that category. So for an example, if you have income in your, for your a la carte section, you wanna make sure you have expenses um, under the expense under that J column. So that, oh, the last one, last part. The last piece of this puzzle is the certification. So on number 25, um, it says you're the select the month for which your claim was submitted for the program. So you are gonna put June of 24 because that is the last month, the last reporting month. You are gonna put whoever is preparing this, um, you're gonna put the name and phone number and your extension. That way, if we have any questions, we can reach back out to you. Um, and then you're going to check number 27 that this um, is your, um, you've certified that this is true on um, what you've submitted. And then it's going to go to pending approval, which you can see down here. So this is not your uh, claim approver cannot fill this out. Only those of you that file claims are the ones that can prepare this docu document. So it'll stay in pending approval until um, the state, till we approve it. Uh, you can keep keep watching this um, as you may have, once we've looked at it, we may be sending it back to you with errors that we found errors. So you wanna keep an eye on this. Um, usually I send an email out to you to let you know that anyway. But um, once it is finally approved, you will have the, it will say approved right here and then you will be, then you're all done. And that actually concludes um, this, a lot of information <laughs> financial webinar. Um, so I will take any questions. I will also, I'm not going to have any um, usually I have a open office hours, but where the annual financial report is a few months away, I will be holding off until it comes closer. So watch the Thursday update and I will have open office hours as it becomes closer. Um, but if you have any questions in the meantime, uh, you can email me or give me a phone call. Uh, and then if there's any questions now, I will take those, but I know sometimes you have to process and then um, then you think later, oh, I should have asked this. So please don't hesitate to call and um, and reach out with any questions. Paula, do we have any questions? We do, Jody. Why would we need a separate worksheet or spreadsheet if those are all recorded to specific revenue accounts as indicated on the MEPS funding codes cheat sheet? So if you are, so that's a good question. So The key is for you to validate that those amounts. So if you're doing this, I guess if you're doing it monthly, it doesn't, I guess it really doesn't matter, but you don't want to take what the business office gives you as, as fact, you're going to want to be balanced. You're going to be wanting looking at comparing what you have submitted in for your invoices, looking at your, um, your labor and benefits, making sure that nobody else is being, um, attached to your food service. Um, you know, you don't want bus drivers in there or principal in there. So you, it's, it's just a way of, of making sure it's a check and balance. So you have something separate, just validating, um, your expenses and your revenues as a second, as a, as another source. Um, it should be balanced. It should be, and hopefully it is coming out right. But you, if you're looking at that information monthly, or at the end of the year and going through and every go th and and looking at it, going through it, making sure everything matches up, everything is expensed appropriately, income appropriate, then then you can use that. But just as long as you're paying attention. To clarify, 
is the one time state match to be divided by breakfast or lunch or is it lunch only? It should be, you should be doing it um, breakfast and lunch. And again, the reason why I say that is it goes back to this average per meal cost. If you put all of your revenue in l in lunch, it's it's not going to show you true breakfast costs at the end. And it's not going to show you true lunch costs. So we you really want to separate your, um, your breakfast reimbursement and your lunch reimbursement, just like the federal. Um, if you don't care about looking at the average per meal cost, if you have another way of doing that, um, but that's another, another um, question. Question. <laughs> that's another long, probably conversation that we would probably want to get together with David and discuss that. How do we break out breakfast and lunch food and other costs? So that. Um, I explained a little bit. I, I did explain that in what I, what, and what I've, so your, your breakfast costs, usually you have, um, for your meal cost, if you know what your, there's different ways you can do it. There's different ways of calc, if you know what your meals are, what you've done for food costs, there's other, I guess how, how do I want to say that? Yeah. Why don't you call me and I, we can talk because there are many ways to do that, but it's all a matter of keeping track in and other spreadsheets and other costs, um, you know, cost systems uh, for you to do that. Um, but yeah, give me a call and, and we can talk and I can talk to you about that. Or even here, I'm throwing David's name out there, but even David can help as well. David will like that, that I throwing calls his way. <laughs> what is the best way to track a la carte expenses again <laughs> it's um everyone does I mean I used to do it a certain way other directors did it a different way um I, again that's probably another whole webinar but a la carte ex expenses yes so uh, so typically like I mentioned before on your invoices keeping track of a la carte expenses that way. Um, so every invoice that comes in, you have it listed as um, a la carte meals, and then actually having your business manager um, create its, its own coding on your on your breakout sheet and, and have it say a la carte. So that way, anything that you've expensed in your invoices, when you turn in that bill will automatically get put to that a la carte expense. So that's probably the easiest way is to work with your business manager and create that, that um, expense um, account code in your system. So you can um, separate it that way. I would say that's the easiest way to do that. So this next question is this food service director works with their CPA and bookkeeper. And would you recommend that the CPA bookkeeper review the webinar? Um. Yeah. I mean, of course, that's always, that's a, I mean, you guys should be on the same page. Like I said, it's really working together, making sure you both understand the process. Um, I have talked with business managers and gone over this um, business and you can let your business manager know that we have a monthly um, federal webinar that uh, the, uh, the Fed, the federal programs um, puts on every month. Um, and we do talk about um, different things with, I have a, spot for child nutrition that, that I talk about and other federal programs. So that's another spot for your um, business manager, accountant um, to, to go to as well. But I definitely recommend the more knowledge, the better. Did you say equipment over $300 should be listed in equipment? Typically equipment would be over $5,000. So for some, and I don't know why, but for some reason, the way this was set up, it was over 300 for this specific report. Um, but yes, and, and I think probably it was, like I said, you can't even buy anything for, for, <laughs> for 300 anymore. So I, that's why, that's why I said smallware would go in the 300 category under 300. So Think of it as per item, not for like if you're buying um, trays and the tray cost is a thousand dollars, I would put it under 
the small under the 300 because per item it's less than 300. So think of it as per item. And I think it's because over 300 really is, it gets into the, um, another accounting piece and it's gone. It's gone off my head, depreciation. And I think that's, that could be um, why that is like that. Anything else? Just a reminder, the webinar is being recorded and will be on our website within a week. Um, I'm out helping CACFU with training next week, so it might take a little longer, um, but it will be on our website. And I believe this, my presentation is on the website as well. It will be when we put the webinar. Yeah. And I have notes. So look at everything I've said is under my notes section. So it may be helpful to go back and um, read those notes um, and then email if you have any questions um, from that as well. And that is it. Thank you very much for joining me today. Again, please call if you have any questions. Um, and I would ask if you have any um, future um, requests for webinars, if you could email me those as well, um, as I'd like to, you know, I'd like to work with you and giving you what you need as well. So please feel free to email me with anything that you're looking to learn more about. And with that, thank you and have a wonderful day.